Good afternoon, everyone. Josh's severe weather Friday afternoon and appreciate you joining me today. I am a meteorologist in the Raleigh area and thank you all for returning. If you've uh, watched several of my videos before, I appreciate you as well for that. Uh, so let's get right to it. We've got a potential for at least a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm to track towards Florida next week. Now, still some time before this is going to form and still some chance for this to change. But we're starting to see a little bit more agreement in how this may play out next week. Uh, there are going to be some significant ramifications when it comes to rainfall totals across the Florida Peninsula. And we're going to explore the potential for some locally strong winds and surf as well. But I think the rain is the biggest of the concern. This is not going to be another Hurricane Helene. Uh, it'll be moving a lot more slowly. It's also going to be dealing with wind shear and a cold front to the north and west of it. So a little bit more uncertainty than maybe what Helene looked like several days before it formed. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at where we stand this season. It's been touted as a very active season, although uh, we have fallen short of the forecast numbers uh, through the beginning of October. Still a busier than average season now, uh, as we've had three major hurricanes and uh, the potential to have a fourth one here pretty soon as Leslie is going to be strengthening in the next couple of days. This is called the ACE, the Accumulated Cyclone Energy. It is a calculated value uh, that calculates the intensity of a storm every six hours. It must be at least a tropical storm to get points. Uh, but you can see our biggest storm by far was Hurricane Barrel. And the next uh, biggest ACE producing storm has actually been Hurricane Ernesto and then Hurricane Kirk which is going to pass Ernesto. Helene was not a huge ACE storm. The reason why is Helene was a shorter-lived storm that rapidly intensified. The other storms were around for a much longer period of time, especially Barrel, uh, which we had on the map for over a couple of weeks. So right now we are on the higher side of average. The average is 100 points. We will probably surpass that soon, and we are likely to get well up into the hundreds and probably going to be one of our top 10 to 15 seasons before all is said and done. Uh, the European model is showing a very ex active week here in the Atlantic, 520% uh, of the climatological average, meaning we are 52 or uh, 5.2 times the average uh, amount of what you would expect for this time of the year. And next week, we remain above average by 40%. It's not as extreme, but it remains above average according to this forecast. We're back to a more typical week here as we get to the third week of October, but the end of October could be a little bit more active again here. Uh, both in the Western Pacific and in the Atlantic, 40% above the average. Uh, our average is starting to come down for the second half of October, but what this means is that there's the expectation that we're going to have probably a storm or two in the basin here at the end of the month of October. Right now, we have Hurricane Kirk and Tropical Storm Leslie. We continue to have a disturbance that is generating a broad area of low pressure. It's not very well formed, but it is certainly there. And over time, we are expecting that this could become a tropical or subtropical depression or storm by the beginning or middle part of next week. Uh, the Hurricane Center makes it clear here that it needs to stay separate from the front just to the north and west to get that. Uh, but either way, the rain is coming to Florida and the wind is coming to Florida. Right now, that chance is 40%. Uh, to me, there's a 100% chance we're going to have an impactful storm, but a 40% chance at this time that it actually gets a name. Uh, and the reason why is that interaction with the front. So let's take a look at the satellite right now. We're going to break down each storm for you here. Uh, this is the area that we're watching very broad here across the southwestern Gulf. And here is Hurricane Kirk, which has met its peak and is going to slowly weaken. This is Tropical Storm Leslie behind it. We've got another wave that is going to come off of Africa in a few days. But uh, overall, it's still very busy out in here. Uh, but a little bit quieter here, closer to land. Now, it doesn't mean it's not going to stay that way, but that's where we stand for the time being. Here's a closer look at the uh, tropical Atlantic. Here is Category 4 Kirk. Uh, Bermuda is right here. The storm is expected to make a turn to the right and go in this direction, but it is going to produce rip currents and rough surf on the eastern seaboard here by the end of the weekend, also in Bermuda here and in the islands. So you'll have indirect impacts from the size of Kirk in the form of rip currents. So keep that in mind if you're heading to the beach. A non-tropical low, this is the remains of Helene uh, passing by to the east of Bermuda. That is going to steer Kirk and Leslie off to the east. Here is Tropical Storm Leslie right now beginning to strengthen now that the wind shear has relaxed. Uh, as uh, Kirk has moved away from Leslie. They've separated from each other here. Here's a look at the Gulf of Mexico this morning or this afternoon, and we've got a frontal boundary right in here and moisture spreading up and over. There's a little bit of a circulation off the Texas coast, 
but most of our rain is heading into southeast Louisiana, into western Florida, into Mississippi and Alabama. Not very heavy rain, but some significant rain for places that actually could use a little bit of it. And for the time being, Florida, the peninsula is pretty quiet. We are going to monitor pop-up showers and storms, which could be briefly pretty heavy. Uh, last night in the Tampa Bay area, we saw several inches of rain not directly associated with this storm. But we're going to keep an eye on what's going on in this portion of the Gulf of Mexico. This is the part of the Gulf that I think is still going to be favorable for a storm to develop. It's going to take some time, though. You've got some wind shear and some dry air up in this portion of the Gulf. You've got a weak circulation down in here. Uh, these two are going to kind of dosey do with each other. We're going to have a little bit of a Fujiwara effect. We actually saw that with Francine here about four weeks ago where we had a low down in here that came out of the tropics, and we had a low pressure here that came from an old frontal boundary. And the two combined uh, in this area here, there was a brush with Mexico, and then that storm got picked up and moved quickly into Louisiana. This one's not going to take that exact same track, but it does have some of the formation um, ingredients to what we saw here with Francine just a few weeks ago. So do keep that in mind. Elsewhere, Mexico is still dealing with some heavy rain, but uh, the remnant depression that came in here is actually going to be re-emerging and making the crossover from the Pacific to the Gulf here in the next 24 hours. We have an invest in here that should be moving away from land here pretty shortly. Then it'll quiet down a little bit. So we've talked about wind shear. It's not good for storms. During Helene, the wind shear was very low across this area. In the Southern Gulf, it's actually pretty low right now as well, but we don't have a very well concentrated system. Now, as we head into next week, you will see the wind shear from the West is going to drop farther South and create a more hostile environment for a storm to form. Uh, that does not mean we may not have a storm. It just means it's probably not going to be strong. You can see, though, if this system stays far enough south, it will avoid that stronger wind shear and will have an opportunity to grow some. But we've got a lot of other questions with this system, mainly how does it get pulled away or does it get split into two or are there two separate lows and one moves across quickly and the other one hangs out longer. And I don't have the answers for those yet. I wish I did, but I don't. Uh, so that's what we're tracking. If we look at the probability of having a tropical storm from the European Ensemble, you will see that the chances are very low until we get to about Monday. And then we have about a 20% chance of a storm forming. We'll probably have a depression at this point, but a 20% chance of a storm forming. You'll see that chance actually climbs as this system moves by potentially to the north of the Yucatan, and it's up to about a 50-50 shot, and then up to about 60 to 70%. Uh, by the time we get to Wednesday and Thursday morning here. Um, so there's a decent chance that this will have tropical storm force winds with it. Whether or not it gets a name, I cannot make that call. Uh, but my gut says we may have Milton out of this if things come together the way that they're being modeled. Uh, so that's what we're looking at here. If you look at the ensembles real quick, you're going to see the two low pressure systems gradually coming together in an area of low wind shear. This is going to be tomorrow afternoon on Saturday. Not a strong system and not a quickly strengthening system, but one that is uh, certainly showing up on models and beginning to get pulled to the north and east. Uh, the area here of high wind shear exists across the northern gulf. If there's a system, it's going to struggle to develop if it moves up into this direction. But most of our modeling keeps it down in here uh, right on into Sunday. So probably not going to have a storm through Sunday. But as we get into early next week, you'll see uh, there is some move to the north and east here by the time we get to Monday night and Tuesday and some stronger solutions showing up. And believe it or not, this little ribbon right here separating the low wind shear from the high wind shear may be a favorable spot for storm formation if it tracks into that area. Uh, and the reason why is that this higher wind shear to the north will actually allow the storm to ventilate on the northern side. So wind shear is not always a bad thing for the health of a storm. We saw that with Helene. We saw that with Francine, where the wind shear actually worked to that storm's favor, worked to those storm's favors in allowing them to strengthen some. So just something to keep in mind for you that I'll be watching here. Uh, I know it's uh, kind of geeky stuff here as a meteorologist, but uh, it is important because it's going to determine what happens here in Florida down the road. This is Wednesday, and you can see a lot of our ensemble members take the storm across Florida, mostly the peninsula. We have one rogue system that comes up farther north, which I'm not expecting. Uh, but we still have uh, quite a few solutions that keep this over the southeastern Gulf even into the end of the week. In fact, there's kind of a split here where there's uh, several of our ensembles take it quickly this way and a few take it back and loop it back into this direction, kind of missing the trough that's going to swing by to the right. Either the trough picks it up or it splits it into two or it misses the trough 
and get stuck down in here quite a bit longer. And I think if it does that, it's gonna be fairly weak due to the wind shear. So that's what we're looking at for possibilities here. This is the GFS from earlier. I don't have the new run yet as of this video, but uh, weaker low pressure system moving into Southwest Florida here by Tuesday morning. You can see that second piece stuck here in the Southern Gulf towards the end of the week. Uh, there is some dry air coming down into Florida. So if this gets shoved down far enough to the South, it'll dry us out towards the end of the week in Florida, but it's not gonna stay that way. As you can see, this front retreats northward again uh, as we head to the following week. Here's the Canadian model and gradual development just north of the Yucatan Tuesday morning. Then we have a tropical storm aimed at Southwest Florida by the time we get to Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night. Not a powerful storm, but enough of one that could cause some local issues. It's not gonna be another Wilma, but it may take a track in that direction if you believe the Canadian model here. The ICON model, this one doesn't run as long, but you can see it is strengthening our system gradually here early next week and does have a tropical storm Monday night and Tuesday heading right towards Naples, Florida on Tuesday night, but not a very strong system. Here's the European model. This is the latest one, so it doesn't go past 90 hours, but it looks a lot like the ICON here where we do have a tropical storm in the Southern Gulf on Tuesday. It is slower than the ICON. Um, as, as I pull the ICON up here, you can see it's, about a day behind it, but it is a similar intensity storm. Uh, the European AI forecast uh, is a little bit quicker than the European operational, but again, aimed at Southwest Florida here for Tuesday morning and then moving out after that. And then we just have to keep an eye on the Western Caribbean a little bit longer. Uh, not my favorite model, I'll show it, but it's probably a worst case scenario at this point. But the Navy GEM model shows low pressure forming a little bit farther to the North on Monday, and it does strengthen the system as it approaches the Tampa Bay area. This, in fact, would be a low-end hurricane Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. That is not my official forecast. I am showing this to you because it will probably pop up in some of your news feeds uh, if you follow those kind of things. But again, and these winds are coming from 850 millibars, not from the surface. Uh, but again, it's a possibility this could try to overachieve, but right now that's not what I'm predicting. Lots of moisture is in place over the Gulf. You will see later in the weekend, it does dry out in Texas and Louisiana stays moist across Florida. Then we get uh, a slow push southward of our moisture, and it's actually pretty decent in North Florida until we get later into the week. But you can see the moisture is going to fight right back here. This boundary is going to hang out in the central and northern Gulf for several more days and just a lot of moisture coming into Florida here. And that is really my biggest concern is the amount of rain that could fall between now and the Monday after next. Uh, you can see a blend of the models gives us amounts over six inches across southwest Florida and close to 10 inches on the east coast. Uh, from south of Melbourne all the way down to the Treasure Coast here, all the way down to the Miami region, and quite a bit of rain as well across the Keys. So a lot of rain is coming for central and south Florida, northern Florida, not so much. Here are those amounts here a little bit closer. Uh, the maximum showing right now is 10 inches. Uh, I believe this is Martin County, and I could be wrong, but somewhere between Palm Beach and Port St. Lucie. Also on the west coast here around Port Charlotte, eight to nine inches of rain. That's if you average every model together. GFS is wetter though. As you can see here, it's got much higher amounts over 15 inches. And if you zoom in closer, you can see that I-4 is kind of our cutoff between lighter amounts and much heavier amounts. But South Florida could get quite a bit of rain out of this, uh, maybe 20 inches or more. And all it takes is one steady band in one day to produce a flash flood. So we don't need any more rain down here, but we are going to see quite a bit of that in the coming days. Uh, wind is a concern at this point, but not a great concern. You see where the front is. There's strong winds right behind it over the eastern Gulf next week. Then you can see where our storm potentially tracks, bringing 30 to 40 mile per hour wind to South Florida. Not a huge deal for wind, but that's if the GFS is right. The Canadian has some stronger wind coming into Southwest Florida. And uh, if I zoom in here for you all to see that, uh, you're gonna see, oops, sorry. Get back to that run here. You're gonna see at least some higher potential wind, 50 mile per hour around the Keys, 40 mile per hour in Southwest Florida. Uh, so again, that's, that's something we're gonna have to watch here pretty closely over time. It's not gonna be a big, big wind storm, but one that will have some impact. And the Euro shows 40 to 50 mile per hour wind over the Keys as well. So we'll keep tracking it for you. This is Hurricane Kirk, major storm. This is Tropical Storm Leslie, which is intensifying and another wave coming off of Africa currently. You can see Kirk has reached its peak. It's now getting a little bit of dry air on the western side, but it was a high-end Category 4 overnight. 
and expected to slowly weaken. If I refresh this, you'll see the forecast has come down a little bit to 130 miles per hour tonight and then below major hurricane strength here in a couple of days. And the remains head towards Western Europe. And you'll see that here on our GFS Ensemble. Uh, pretty good agreement on the track, maybe heading into Southwest England, Wales, and Western France, but not a huge wind maker at that point. A wind shear is gonna start coming up. Relative humidity is still pretty good. Sea surface temperatures are good, but over time, wind shear will pick up and we're going to lose the hot water, so it will be weakening more significantly. Leslie's looking a lot healthier today. The wind shear uh, from the backside of Kirk is no longer impacting her. Winds are up to 65 miles per hour, and we may actually have a hurricane by tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, right now, the official forecast takes it close to major hurricane strength, but keeps it a Category 2. It may have a chance still, but looks like a little bit less chance than this time yesterday. And we have pretty good agreement that it's going to recurve away from the islands. This is an outlier that I'm not trusting at this point. Sea surface temperatures are great. Uh, Humidity is pretty good here. Heat content's coming up over the next couple of days. So I do think this storm could try to rapidly intensify tonight into tomorrow night. Here's a GFS model that shows Kirk moving away, then Leslie behind it. Almost as strong as Kirk, but not quite. More like Kirk's little sister. And then that will weaken and turn away next weekend. And uh, we may have something behind it, but right now the only model that shows that is the European model. Kirk and then Leslie down here. And then here's potentially another one, maybe Nadine if Milton doesn't form. Uh, so that's what we're looking at in the Pacific. Here's what we have left from the depression yesterday. Never got to tropical storm strength and it's already moving into the Gulf, crossing over uh, from the Gulf of Tehuantepec into the Bay of Campeche. Another area we're going to watch is moving away from Mexico. We have a weak disturbance here, uh, well southeast of Hawaii. Another system to keep an eye on. Uh, our storm that hit Taiwan has fallen apart, and we do have a remnant tropical storm in the South Indian Ocean, no threat to land. That's Ancha, I believe. So thank you all so much for your time today. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm going to be back on tomorrow around lunchtime. As always, please feel free to leave a comment if you have a question about a forecast. I just ask that you keep it respectful. Uh, more and more folks that watch, I know there's folks that don't agree with things. I'm just asking right now that you stay respectful of each other and that you share love with each other the way that I personally believe Christ has loved us as a Christian man. And I do want to really quickly read a passage for you that I think is super important as we are seeing it more and more. Paul tells the Church of Rome in Romans 13, 11, that the day is near. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Jesus is coming again, and you've got the opportunity to accept him as your savior. Uh, but I will say that because I did 11 years ago, and I'm so glad I did. It, it's given me hope and joy in my life and giving me this assignment to share with you all. I was not a believer for a long time. I was very negative towards religion, very negative towards believers. Um, but things do change. And fortunately, a window opened for me to accept God and accept Jesus. And it's changed my outlook on life. And it's given me the opportunity to love others the way that God has loved me, because I was not loving people that way. I was, I was uh, trusting people to tell me what, I, what they thought of me, and, and that was letting me down. But instead now, uh, because I've made this choice, um, I've got the opportunity to bless other folks and to pray over them and to treat, treat them the way that they uh, were intended to be treated by God by sharing his love. We're not all perfect. I am far from it. But just know this, that you are loved and that you matter and that your prayers don't go unnoticed. So if you have a prayer request, please feel free to list that if you'd like, and I will be praying for you as I continue to pray for those who are cleaning up from Helene and from other storms this season. Hope you all have a great Friday, and I will see you again soon. God bless you.